All right, Sexual Perversion by Thomas Nagel. Uh, presentation number four. In his paper on sexual perversion, Nagel makes the claim that sexual perversion is not just something society considers sexually unnatural, but in fact something that comes about if both parties involved are not receiving their sexual fulfillment and happiness out of the bargain. In other words, it's an incomplete version of a sexual sort of loop in which both parties become aroused not only by each other, but by the awareness of one's desire. In other words, he uses the example between um, two imaginary people named Romeo and Juliet in which they both they notice each other, and then they notice each other noticing each other, and then they both basically become aroused by the fact that the other person knows that they're aroused by them and some sort of infinite loop, but the point is, there's actually, he kind of, he doesn't quite say it, but he kind of touches on the issue of consent in relationships and in sexual relationships, and how, um, if it is not present in any sort of sexual encounter or relationship, then it is more likely to be a perversion. Now, um, he also states that to um, elaborate on his point on what is a sexual perversion, uh, Nagel cites sex with animals who only have some sort of awareness of the other and the situation and cannot fully realize their own sexual awareness as a perversion because, you know, obviously they can't completely comp If a human tries to have sex with an animal, they're not going to completely comprehend themselves in that sexual situation and therefore that loop cannot be closed. It's like an unclosed circuit. It doesn't work. And that becomes a sexual perversion under Nagel's definition. Uh, compare that to when he talks about the views many people have on homosexuality as a sexual perversion. And this paper was written in 1969, so that's changed a bit, at least. But um, he classifies it as a non-perversion, implying that Many people consider it a, um, a perversion because of uh, gender roles, thinking that there have to be a male and a female in the relationship to, for there to be sexual fulfillment, and that some people would consider it perversive to, ha to be attracted to somebody who had, like, you know, a girl attracted to a girl because they have a similar body type or something like that. But he says that... Um, that doesn't, it doesn't classify as a perversion because uh, gender roles do not need to be present in order for there to be sexual fulfillment of both parties and sexual awareness of both parties. And that's what makes it a, that's what keeps it from being a perversion. It's a perfectly normal and consensual sexual act. There's no problem with it. Now, um, Overall, I'd say his argument is decent, especially for being written in 1969, though some of the societal views on things like homosexuality and uh, gender roles, to some degree, I mean, they have changed a bit, but there are some people who still sort of view them this way a little bit, as they did in 1969, sadly. Um, but I won't get into that. Um, he could have gone into more detail when he was talking about s and I kept waiting for him to note that as long as both the sadistic and masochistic parties were fulfilled and aware of each other's desires and arousal and also safety, then the act was not technically a perversion, but he kind of shied away from doing that. Um, that's just one part I thought I could, could have improved. But overall, I thought it was um, a pretty good paper, and I thought he made a decent argument.